And welcome back to the week of what if. Today's what if comes to us from, or one shot what if comes to us from Dylan and Isaiah Knight. Who asked the questions, what if the Saiyans were in the Arrowverse? Now, I think, mind you, I think I did what if Saiyans were in Dragon Ball, um, or Dragon Ball, what if they were, yeah, what if they in Dragon Ball, what if they were in the DC Universe? I think I did that one. But to be fair, the Arrowverse is, well, it is DC. It's not the primary DC Universe. This is basically like an elsewhere world. Uh, it's not our pri it's not the prime comic universe. So the question is, do Saiyans existing affect the overall world of the Arrowverse DC world if they if they exist? Um, so that's going to depend on a couple of things. Are we including all of the story canon um, Saiyans that we have exist? So Vegeta, Goku, Raditz, Bardock, all the do they exist in this world? So if so, well, yes, there's going to be a pretty drastic change to this universe. If not, I'm sorry to say it's actually not going to be a very drastic, um, uh, very drastic change. Here's what I mean by this. Um, so I did not follow every DC universe Arrowverse show. In fact, if I'm going to be honest, only the ones I really legitimately watched, I watched the first season of Super uh, Supergirl. And I've seen sporadic episodes of other seasons of Supergirl, sporadic parts of The Flash, Arrow, uh, uh, Legends of Tomorrow, uh, a little bit of the Constantine show, <laughs> a, little, a little bit of Black Lightning here or there. So I've never truly watched, uh, I'd never even watched Batgirl or Batwoman. Uh, I heard that was just not good. Uh, so I have, um, <laughs> so I haven't truly watched it until, but I did watch a certain degree of it, to be sure. So I do at least know the universe. And yeah, the Flash can still travel through dimensions and time and all that. Great. Supergirl's stronger than Superman in this world. Uh, that, that, I never liked that. I really dislike that. Uh, especially because it was basically Superman saying, oh, no, 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 you're the stronger. No, that that's just bull. That is just bull. Um, Arrow, that we've still never met Batman in this world. Arrow is uh, is pretty badass mentally. Uh, we had so the, the, what the point I'm trying to get at here is if we're just dealing with average foot soldier Saiyans and maybe even mildly strong ones like say Raditz, who is still roughly speaking in the average power range, uh, Raditz or um, like a Nappa who is definitely on the higher level of power for a Saiyan. Even Paragus was in in his old age was in his upper four thousands. Well. Great. We know that uh, even low-level Saiyans can pretty much raise a planet. Uh, raise a planet. Even Nappa was capable of turning. Uh, was he the one who turned the city pretty much to glass? As uh, Vegeta put it in a bridge, or was it Vegeta? Either way, well, Nappa almost certainly has the power to blow up a planet if he really wants to. We know for a fact King Vegeta could do it, and he had only had a power level of like eleven thousand. So anywhere in the, in the upper fives, the t upper maybe like Goku when he shows up to and beyond is a pretty much a planet buster. Even Roshi is a low planet buster, blowing up the moon. Um, so and his power is not is nowhere near the Saiyans levels even then, or at least not Nappa's level. But um, that said. Most Saiyans aren't that strong. Even going into Great Ape, like Supergirl, Superman, they alone are able to pretty much handle any low-level Saiyan that were to come to Earth. And there's so many aliens coming to Earth and that exist on the planet Earth and they have to deal with that generally the Saiyan race would not be that big of a threat. However, let's devil's advocate this just a little bit. Let's say that our named Saiyan characters exist. Well, okay. We know Planet Vegeta gets blown up. Let's now. That being said, our main Saiyan characters exist. Do their stories work the same way? For the sake of argument, let's say it does. Let's say that Frieza doesn't exist in this world. It's someone else. Dark Side, a Brainiac, someone evil Kryptonian. Someone destroyed Planet Vegeta. Okay, great. So you get the other Saiyans that survived out in the world. Well, okay, we know Broly is going to be completely and utterly broken, even by, even just by, you know, standard time fare. Um, Goku gets sent to Earth, great, okay. Uh, 
does does you know Raditz showing up affect the world? He's looking for Kakarot, thinking you know what's gonna what's going on here? Where's Kakarot? Um, and what he ultimately finds is you know superheroes, superhero like meta humans on this planet that are equivalent, if not stronger, than a lot of Saiyans. Raditz would be very confused by this. Ultimately, he would. Um, uh, ultimately, he would probably come to blows with one of the heroes. And he probably would take on the lower level heroes without too much difficulty. He's still moving at extremely high speeds, well beyond that of normal individuals. It would take someone like the Flash or Supergirl to probably keep on with that. Even Martian Manhunter would be a suitable option here. Uh, not many of the like the Legends of Tomorrow cast would probably be able to do much. Uh, like Constantine, uh, yeah, he's got the magic, sure, but he's got to be able to hit him. Uh, and, um, and Black Lightning, uh, not really, not really applicable in this fight. I'm just going to move this out of the way real quick to make sure I get everyone in the picture who I can remember. Uh, yeah, like not a lot of these, uh, characters are actually that strong compared to Saiyans. It's only a real heavy hitter is the Flash has the speed force, which really helps him out. Supergirl and Superman are Kryptonians, so I've, and powerful ones at that, so that helps them out. Uh, unfortunately, other than that, though, you, you got a low amount of people. I mean, the Atom can get small, sure, and it has other things going for it, too. Um, sun, not Sunspot. Oh, God. Um, uh, what is the, the molecule, the mo guy can manipulate molecules. Um, and why, it's not Sunspot. Uh, Sun, oh, crap. I've done, uh, I've done verses with him, like, against, like, um, Human Torch or something like that. I can't remember exactly what his name is. He's actually, like, two people mixed into one doing an experiment. Uh, but he can basically manipulate molecules. He would be a pretty, he could pose a very serious threat to most Saiyans. Rads eventually would get beaten, uh, but probably not killed. Like, they wouldn't kill him, and they'd let him leave. Uh, this in turn will bring Nappa and Vegeta. Now maybe in this version, Nappa and Vegeta obviously don't work for uh, Frieza. They probably exist on their in their own mirror. Like the Saiyans, the few of them that are left, just exist and are trying to rebuild themselves. Vegeta would come, see what happens. Same with Nappa. They are far stronger. And so, uh, even though Super... And let's be clear, we are saying... We're talking about this universe's version of Superman and Supergirl. These two are nowhere near as strong as their counter comic counterparts, by a long shot. Uh, in fact, most on-screen, uh, be it animated series or like, animated TV or animated uh, or live-action TV or movies, are they, they are much weaker than their comic, counterpart comic counterparts. Hell, even the strongest versions of Superman we normally we tend to get are actually in the d animated movies. Because those are usually directly adapted. I mean, some changes are there from the comics. Like, um, what was it? Um, Superman, uh, the one where he's dying. Uh, where he gets exposed to too much radiation and he's dying. Like, we do see a lot of, you see how quite, just how powerful he really is in that film. Like, he is super powerful in that film. Uh, I can't remember exactly what it is. Superman All-Stars. That's what it's, I think, All-Star, oh no, All-Star Superman, I think it was. That's what it was. And him versus, like, the elites, where he just shows up, uh, oh yeah, he, if you had Super Hearing, you hear the pop as he hits the atmosphere. <laughs> like, yeah, Superman's pretty beast in that, in that movie. I, I do like him in that. Uh, and I do like his speech, too. I do. I do still think it's a little idea, idealistic, but still, I like it. Um, so, yeah. Oh, the problem here for Earth in this scenario is as follows. Because when Vegeta got humiliated and beaten by Goku, he wouldn't go blow up the Earth. He was going to gun that thing out of existence. Uh, and yeah, while they might try to stop him, frankly, from what we kind of seem of speed in the Arrowverse, again, take Flash out of the equation because he'd have to get up in the air. Um, the Superman and, uh, Supergirl are not capable of just disappearing and looking, moving so fast that it looks like they rematerialize pretty much. Even in, like, Saiyan Saga, they're moving at speeds where you could not keep track of them with the human eye at all. It looked like they were just teleporting, especially when you got the Namek. That's when you were hitting ridiculous levels of speed. 
So even if they are theoretically faster in travel speed, they they still need to be able to rush in there, and he is not going to let, let that happen. Even if by some miracle they do block the blast, they're probably going to take a serious hit. Again, we can weaker versions of the characters. And they might not be down for the count, but they will be hurt. So Vegeta then just decides, screw it, go and ape. And at that point, he's ten times stronger, and then he's now causing, uh, he's now uh, just causing all sorts of havoc. The only thing they have would have going for them is if they could figure out his tail is his weakness and remove his tail. If they do do that, well, then he gets locked in the Phantom Zone, as does Nappa. And really, then that is just the end of most of this, all of this, really. Up until you get to, I think, what was it, one of the um, Crisis Zone. Where was it a Nihilus? Or no, sorry, the Anti-Monitor. Um, so the Anti-Monitor issue might, might come into play here. And it might come into play because they'll probably be looking for a way to stop the Anti-Monitor, obviously. Uh, I can't, I don't, I never watched any other uh, crises on. So, so ultimately, um, uh, yeah, ultimately, I would say that it would come down to if Broly were to be recruited and for his true potential to be unlocked against the Anti-Monitor, the question now becomes, is Broly strong enough to defeat the Anti-Monitor in the DC Arrowverse? In fact, I'm going to actually look up how strong the Anti-Monitor is in the DC uh, Anti-Monitor Arrowverse, anti-monitor, um, monitor, DC, Arrowverse. Okay, here we go. So how strong was the anti-monitor in the DC Arrowverse? Uh, being of supreme power, a malevolence that embarked on a mission to eradicate the multiverse by whatever means necessary, despite being opposed by his counterpart, Mardova, he was ultimately successful thanks to the use of his invention, the anti-monitor cannon. Okay. The question is, because we know Broly is so powerful that he can literally break reality and the universe by clashing with individuals. Okay, so power level, I need a power level here. Give me, give me some, give me some numbers here. Give me some abilities. Tell me, tell me your secrets. Uh, so let's see. Antimatter manipulation, essence absorption, dimensional travel, divine strength, force field generation, immortality, telekinesis, telepathy, paralysis away, possession, gravikinesis, energy projection, size alteration, power bestowal, levitation, genius level intellect, manip manipulation, master combatant, master technician, and intimidation. Okay, um, so Broly's probably gonna get his, even if Broly were to somehow be allowed to rage the ever-loving hell out, uh, like to his full potential, he would at best be an obstacle, but he would be an obstacle that could be overcome based on everything this guy has. Uh, like, seriously, this guy is capable of trading, uh, while possessing Harbinger, he could easily overpower Superman of Earth-96 with one hand, during the final battle, he was able to match the combined might of all the heroes that gathered to fight him. Uh, now, granted, that, including Broly on there, that might change it because no one in the in uh, the uh, Earth's pantheon is a universe buster in this in, in this uh, franchise in this series of you know shows. No one's a universe buster. Broly's a m multiple universe times over universe buster, so that is a level of power the Anti Monitor is not immediately prepared for. However, he does have cosmic knowledge, which means he probably might even be aware of Broly's existence. Um, he possesses similar powers um, uh, to uh, uh, that. Uh, so, one second. He may not be. He noted that the Paragons, considering the world's greatest heroes, may not be enough to defeat the Anti Monitor, proven proven by how easily he overpowered the majority of them until they managed to use a shrinking bomb to defeat him. Oh God, so stupid. Power Storm. He's able to just grant power to anyone he wishes, as shown when he turned Harrison Nash Wells into Pariah. Thereby giving Nash the ability to teleport and travel dimensions. Uh, he has energy projection, gra gravity. Needs. He can literally manipulate gravity around him. Levitation, essence absorption. Uh, he's able to absorb the essence of his counterpart. Uh, antimatter projection. As the ruler of the antimatter universe, he's able to manipulate antimatter at will. What you used to create the antimatter ca cannon, they unleashed waves of antimatter that destroyed all but Earth 1. And even when it was already destroyed, Mobius was able to induce another antimatter uh, wave to destroy Earth 1, completing his victory. When facing the Spectre, 
Mobius was able to project a blast of antimatter to fight against Oliver's attempt to reach him before being getting overcome. But Oliver was able to manipulate the antimatter of the attack, dispersing it, and use it along with the matter to create uh, the multiverse again, or recreate the multiverse. Earthquake generation size manipulation. Okay, so look, the antimatter, I mean, you know, he does have weaknesses. Ethereum, which is, um, uh, he's unable to skip the netherverse. Spectre proved incapable. He couldn't defeat the Spectre. Uh, Paragons, uh, Mard predicted the seven Paragons were the only individuals who could take down Mobius. Uh, vanishing Point, incapable of reaching the Vanishing Point as it exists outside of time and space. So, n honestly, none of these are something Broly could really, um, Broly could really take advantage of. Uh, that said, though, I will say Broly would pro. I mean, so the anti monitor stuff would still probably play out majority like it does. Broly would just be a powerful enough being to actually kind of, um, uh, w w to actually kind of put up a fight to some degree, more powerful than most anyone else in the universe. They just ultimately wouldn't matter in the long haul. Long haul. Um, so yeah, if the Saiyans existed in the Arrowverse. It wouldn't really be that big of a change to the overall story structure at all, but it would be, it would at least provide some interesting stories. Uh, so, I mean, that's, that, but that's my, overall my thoughts. Nothing major, but they'd still be at least unique to, in the, uh, to the world. Uh, so ultimately, that's my thoughts. What do you think, though? What if the Saiyans were in the uh, Arrowverse? Let me know. Until then, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Like, comment, share, subscribe. I got a bunch of videos I got to do today. So thanks for watching. I'll see you later.